Hi, my name is Yannicka from Yannicka Quilt. In this video, I will show you exactly how to make a low poly um, pattern. It looks complicated, believe me. It is the easiest thing. You don't even have to know how to sew. Um, so I'll show you step by step how to reproduce any of my low poly pattern. This is your pattern or a similar pattern for low poly. So the important parts, of course yours will be in color, mine is in black and white. This fabric chart is really important. So I want you to choose your, car, your fabric and then decide A will be this and B and this. So uh, you stick a little swatch of your fabric in each square. That way you won't uh, get lost trying to do this uh, low this low poly. The diagram for the cougar, as you can see, you have number and letters. Let me zoom in. Okay. Like for example, see what well, I have one, two, three, four, and fabric C, fabric B, fabric A. So this is your map. This is your map to be able to reproduce the cougar. The next page are your pieces exactly like on your map but real size. As you can see here I have one C, piece one, color C, and you will see that I have little stars right here. Those are really important. I'll explain to you later. So what you have to do is prepare your material. For this project you'll need a rotary cutter and a, a small ruler. Um, any fusible fleece. Uh, I like Pelon um, 820 because of the grid, even though I don't really use the grid uh, for this project. Uh, I, buy it by, I buy it by the bolt, so that's what I use. Um, I suggest a fleece that's not too heavy. Uh, I say medium. And um, you also need the freezer paper. It is really important. It's a big part of uh, the process. School glue, school glue. washable, non-toxic. Um, uh, you can use uh, a liquid like that, but I really like to use sticks. I buy them by the box. And finally, you need to pull your fabric. What you need to do is trace the different part into the freezer paper. Um, if you have um, an inkjet printer, you can print. If you have a laser printer, do not put a freezer paper into your printer because you're going to ruin it. Since I don't have one and I don't intend to buy one, what I do is just trace the shape on the freezer paper. Then I write the number, the fabric I will use, and reproduce my little star. For this color C, I decided to use um, this wood pattern 
uh, because it will look like um, fur when I use it. So the first thing I do is stick my pill on on the back side of my fabric and you just uh, do as instructed when you buy the pelon here you can see I've cut the shape um, I forgot to tell you to draw on the uh, dull side of the freezer paper because the shiny side will stick a little bit when it melts to your fabric so now I have my shape I have my fabric with my pelon so I just have to iron the freezer paper on my fabric it, lay, it takes about three seconds and as you can see it takes a little bit to the fabric next step we cut the shape so now we cut the shape that's where the little stars become really important when you have a little star, it means that you leave one quarter of an inch on that side. Since this is the first piece, I will leave one quarter inch all around. like this. Here I did the same for uh, piece 2 and piece 3 with the pelon behind. Um, put the frozen, fr uh, fr frozen paper <laughs> on the fabric and now I'm gonna cut. As you can see I do not have a little star right here. It is really important so I just cut right where the paper stop there you go so now I have three parts my number one, number two, and number three. Here, if I look at my diagram, oops, there you go. You have one piece one here, two, and three. So I just do the same thing. This is piece one, this is piece two and this is piece 3 like this so now I see that there's a little piece of fabric that bother me because it's getting thick because I have three layers so I just cut a little, the little corner right here and I do the same thing right here and put it back together like this and like this this is perfect so the next step you use glue you just put a little piece of glue oops, like this uh, more than a little bit put plenty and then put the piece back I do the same thing right here and I do this so now I am ready to put piece 4 
So here I made a piece 4A, 5D and 6D. As you can see here there's no stars so there's not a quarter inch. Same here, same here, like this. So like I did before, I just add glue. and just take the piece in here. As you can see everything fit great. Um, now I can add this one and this one. As you can see the same thing happened here. I have a bit too much fabric so I'm gonna cut it just a, a corner like this and same thing here and this is in the way so I cut everything that's in the way so now as you can see everything should fit a lot better like this and I just glue again what I really recommend is that you try to work in section as you can see here I have from 1 to 14 this would be your first section then you, you can add um, this part here, this part here, go below and finish with the ear that way it's a lot uh, a lot easier, it's manageable because as you can imagine um, just the head is about 2 feet tall so it gets to be uh, unmanageable. Once you have your sections done, what I like to do is to just use a bit of my pelon and just reinforce a bit. You don't have to, but I think it makes things a lot easier. So I would just iron some piece like this, maybe add this one here like this, so that everything stick together and uh, doesn't give you any problem when, when it's time to sew. So let's start sewing. Um, I, the, my piece is not completely done, but I'll show you the basic and you'll understand. Once you have many pieces together, it's getting to be a bit big and unmanageable. Um, I recommend that you start stitch stitching with a zigzag stitch. Uh, you make it close. I put it at 0 0.5 um, to hold everything together and it really gives a nice um, attract attractive uh, feeling like um, a bit of maybe um, vitrail glass glass work so the first thing I do is peel off the part as you can see here I still have a quarter inch showing so that means I still need this paper and this paper and this paper because there's other parts that are coming on both sides but just to uh, demonstrate uh, how to stitch I'm just gonna unglue a tiny bit and fold I'll do the same thing here and maybe this little part here there you go so now I am ready to do zigzag stitch so it's easy, you just follow the line, try to put it in the middle of your zigzag stitch, and you just go.
like this and if you would you would continue like this and do this part and this part just sew all the seam the only thing you need to know is how to do a straight zigzag stitch I told you it was easy as you can see on this finished uh, project this part here it this is this part here those those like this and you just like a puzzle put the piece together some of them are a bit more complicated like here for the nose some part I um, stick on top because it was just easier like here for the eyes and for the mouth but everything is explained in the um, document the pattern you bought and if you have any questions you just can uh, email me you have my email on the pattern so I hope that you enjoyed this I sure did I developed this technique from different other technique because I'm lazy I really really wanted to do something special but not paper piecing it so that's why I develop uh, the low poly technique and uh, since I made them before you I hope I made all the mistakes and uh, made it easier for you uh, what you have to do at the end is just applique it on whatever background you want um, you can choose different colors here I use uh, browns but if you want you can use blues you can use red you can use pink uh, don't let yourself stuck in a corner uh, think outside the box like right now I'm doing a raccoon in blue it's gonna be so much fun so thank you for watching